I'd like to just give you some very simple treatments now that you can use in the home. I had a lady ring me up one day and she said, Barbara, my 10 year old has just trodden on a rusty nail and she's not vaccinated. I said, aha. She said, we have your poultice DVD and so we've put a grated potato poultice on the wound. I said, good, that's a good choice. She said to me, but it's still a little bit swollen and it's still a little bit sore. I said, aha, well you can go one step further. Get two buckets of water and make one very hot and put the child's foot in the hot water for three minutes. How hot? As hot as the child can stand. <laughs> we don't want to burn the child. I always put a person's foot in my hand and I put my hand in the water so my hand is filling the water. And if the person cannot take it, the only time you would not do it would be someone who has poor circulation, maybe the very old or the very young, uh, someone who has diabetes and they can't feel their feet properly. That's the only time you would not do it. So three minutes hot water and then cold. And it's as cold as you can. Ideally put some ice cubes in that cold. And the cold is done for 30 seconds. So what's happening here is when the foot is put into hot water, we're warm blooded creatures. So immediately the blood rushes to the area. And when the blood rushes to the area, fresh blood's coming in and fresh blood is bringing more oxygen, more nutrients, more water, more white blood cell. And as it pushes the old out, it's throwing off the waste. Can you see that? Now, after three minutes, the blood starts to slow down because that's what happens when we're in a hot bath, isn't it? We start to slow down to the point of sleep. And so you pull the foot out of the bucket and into the ice cold. Will that wake it up? Woo. We are warm blooded creatures. And whenever cold touches our body, there's a reaction. And basically the body's going, whoa, cold. It has the potential to kill us quick, move fast. Can you see that's the reaction? Now within 30 seconds, the reaction has died down and the blood can start slowing down. So we put it back in the hot and wake it up again. So whenever you do the hot, you have a kettle of boiling water there and while the foot or the hand or whatever you're doing is in the cold, you heat up the hot with a bit of boiling water. Again, test it, test it. You do this whole thing three times always starting with the hot and always finishing with the cold. You see, finishing with the cold equalizes the circulation, closes pores, prevents chilling. The only time we've had someone faint in our steam bath is they had the steam and they didn't want to have the cold shower, so they went and st stood in the cool air and then came back in. Cool air does not do what cold water does. It's the reaction of the cold water on the blood and that doesn't happen with cold air. If someone says, well, I want to do the steam but not the cold, I say, well, I'm sorry, you can't do it <laughs> because you'll be in trouble if you don't finish with that cold. It's only quick, it's only quick. So the lady did this to her little girl that had trodden on the rusty nail. Three minutes in the hot, 30 seconds in the cold, three times. And then I said, put the grated potato on. I said, ring me in two hours. You see, if there's no response in two hours, what do I say? You go straight to hospital. I said, ring me in two hours. She rang me and she said, she's laughing. All her pain has gone. There is no redness at all around the foot. I said, good. <laughs> My suggestion would be with this girl to do hot and coals maybe three times a day. And you probably only need to do the grated potato poultice overnight. I always say, watch the body's reaction. And if, you're, if your body says, yes, remember, you're the doctor. Are you getting relief? I'll tell you another story similar. I was in New Zealand and I was seeing a lady. She brought her seven-year-old boy in. He was just with her while she talked to me. And my eye immediately went to his finger. 
Now this finger, the joint was all swollen, it was red and there was like a white pussy bit on top. I said, what's, what's the matter with the finger? She said, well, the doctor says it's cellulitis. You know what cellulitis is? Inflammation of the cell. I said, yes, I can see that. But what am I asking now? Why? Because that wouldn't have happened for no reason. She said, oh, a few days ago, he had a blister on his finger and he was playing in the dirt and the blister broke. Are we starting to see what happens? Aha. Uh -huh. I said, what have you been doing? It wasn't a few days ago, it was actually a few weeks ago because she said he's on his second course of antibiotics. He's having to take painkillers at night to sleep and sleeping tablets. So he's on three medication and he's seven. I said, um, do you mind if I try something? She said, not at all, not at all. Now I got the permission of the child. Always get the permission of the child because a man convinced against his will will be of the same opinion still. I always use the will. I said, can I do this? Can I just do the hot and coals? I told him what I was gonna do, I explained it. He nodded and I got two cups. He could not take the hot, so he made it a bit colder. He could not take it we made, until he could bear it. When he could bear it, after three minutes, we put his finger in ice cold. While he's in there, we put hot in the little hot mug. And then I said, get your good finger and put your good finger in there so that your brain can assess that that's not that hot. Yes. And this time his sore finger could bear the hot. He did it three times. By the end of it, a smile came to his face. In 15 minutes, we had reduced the pain by 50%. 15 minutes. What did we do? We just got fresh supplies of blood in, which took the old blood out. It's very simple. And then I grated a potato and I put it on his finger. His mother rang me the next day. She said, this is amazing. He woke up in the morning and said, can I do more hot and colds? See, he'd experienced the relief. She said, by the end of the next day, by the second grated potato poultice, all the junk came out. He had no more pain. And if he does get pain, what does he do? Just goes back to this. She said, what will I do with the antibiotic? I said, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> I can tell you what I would do if you would like to ask. <laughs> she was so excited. It's so simple, isn't it? It's incredibly simple. So water is not just a powerful thing to take into our body. We can use it externally to bring relief with simple ailments. And before I close, I'll just give you one last one, which every home should know this remedy. And this is a straight hot foot bath. And it's done for a headache. It's done for a headache. It's done for if someone's highly stressed. It's done if someone has a congested chest or problems in their abdomen. You see our head, our chest and our abdomen have a reflex in the feet. And often there's congestion of blood if there's a problem here or here or in the head. So you put your feet in hot water and basically the brain goes, whoa, the feet need help. Send extra blood down. So it takes the blood from the congested area. We have many guests come here that have um, headaches from caffeine withdrawals. So we're doing lots of hot foot baths. <laughs> 20 minutes in the hot foot bath, maybe every five minutes another little bit of boiling water. When the hot foot bath finishes, they put their feet up and you pour cold water over their feet and then dry it. Very simple treatment. Very simple. If someone's stressed out, bad headache, congestion in these areas, that's called a straight hot foot bath. You'll never look at water the same again, will you?